Hello and welcome back to the channel. Ryan Nordahl here, Epic Whitetail Habitat LLC. If you haven't yet or you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification. That way every time I upload a new video, you get that notification right away. And any of the products or tools you see me using in these videos, you can find links in the description below so you want to check that out. But today we're out here on the proving grounds and we're going to clean up some some of this storm debris, branches, logs, what have you. We're going to chunk it up, firewood. Um, my brother still burns firewood at his house, so we're going to chunk this up for him. I don't have my splitting maul, but my dad does have a wood splitter and I forgot my maul at home, so we'll probably take care of that at a later time if anything needs splitting. But uh, we're going to get this chunked up, piled up, and uh, we're going to get on to some other projects. So follow me along, and there's always something to do on your hunting property, and this is one thing that I can get done today. Now that we got a new saw blade on, chain, got this wood chunked up down here, we're going to head up top of the ridge and we're going to start cutting some birch. We're going to cut them completely off and we're going to stack the tops strategically to give us a little bit of screening to get into a stand we have up here.
So you can see this birch behind me here. It really doesn't hinge cut very well. It, it doesn't, but you can get a lot of stump sprouts off of it. So we're going to flush cut it off. We're going to take the tops and we're going to pile them strategically, giving side cover to deer to relate to and to give our stand back here a little bit of a screening element as we come up the little hollow into that stand to hit this ridge top. This is a great little pinch point. This ridge top is no more than 35 yards wide, but the deer cruise us during the rut heavily and it's going to make it that much better to get into. So you can see our stand location in this maple. We come up this hollow behind. We've got to clear up this broken off cherry back here. We're going to clean him up. But this travel corridor that extends, you can see I had a mock scrape there with a vine, but they've busted it off. They come down through here and they work to the south slope on the other side here. Great little pinch point. They can also go here, still staying on top of the ridge. But there's a few things I want to show you. We busted this off early last year. There was a scrape there. This dead branch in the trail up here. It's a dead branch. I say you got to have a live branch or a very nimble branch that you've cut off and stapled or however you've done it to the tree. This branch here has been laying here, this broken off cherry tree, for probably a year and a half. Scrape. You can see they've busted off all the sticks here. This travel corridor sets up pretty well. This is where I killed Captain Hook back in 2018. frequented this corridor quite a bit. You can see a lot of the hinge cutting we did in 2017. We now got to take all this small cherry regen. There's some silver maple regen in here. We've got to tip it back. Nice to see some elderberry coming in there. I love elderberry for cover and browse. Little bush honeysuckle bush right here. Another bush honeysuckle here. Here's that branch we cleaned up earlier. There's my Millennium stand. I love that stand. All day sit, comfortable, very comfortable. I don't make that ladder stick though anymore. You can see it going up there. I don't know why Hurricane went out of business, but they did. They had a good thing going. Another scrape here. This is a heavy, heavy trail coming in and out of here. They go off to the south point. All these big popple back here. All those popple are going to be coming down here. We've got an extensive logging project going to start happening here this winter. But right here is where Captain Hook died in 2018. He actually come, there's a tree over that trail, but now the trail goes around. Cleaned it up, but he come up over that. I was sitting in that stand right there. He come in, he turned into these water tanks. And it was game over for him. That was a real fun hunt, real quick. It was within the first five minutes of legal shooting time on the first day of bow season 2018. And uh, for those of you that have been following along that long, that was that. But uh, we're gonna get to work here. I just wanted to show you these couple little things here, scrapes, or this little branch here. There was a scrape here until the turkeys come in here and did some scratching. The one thing we're really gonna work on here <clears throat> over the course of the winter, getting all these birch, silver maple, and small cherry out of here. I got a good white oak right here, as you can see. I want to release him. I want to cut all these trees out around him, get him plenty of sunlight and plenty of room to spread that big canopy. Same with this nice white oak. Produce a lot of acorns this year. Let's release him and let him spread his wings.
Now I use this Vortex switchback carbon tripod to hold my phone. You can see the phone mount on it. When I'm recording these videos, I use that thing quite a bit. It's lightweight. I'm not lugging a big heavy tripod around. Extremely lightweight. I absolutely love this thing. If you're looking for a good tripod, even for shooting your gun, I've rested my rifle on there quite a bit. But I tell you what, I will leave a link in the description below this video. You'll want to check that out. It'll lead you right to that product right there. I love it. Check it out. Happens sometimes. So you can see this trail system right here it comes along the inside of that hollow. Boom. Right out to our stand. We got to drop a mock scrape from that limb. We'll drop a vine from that probably as soon as we can here so we don't forget about it because they continue on through this travel corridor or they come down the travel corridor here to the right. So you're capturing a lot of movement by having that mock scrape hanging from that limb right there. And then it correlates and relates to that stand in that tree. You can see this little bit of a faded trail here. The deer been running. This actually wraps down and around this point and down into the bottom. There's a big oak tree down in there. You can see it be right there where I'm pointing. It's about 50, 60 yards away. I'm gonna show you something here. And I just discovered this on the property this year. We ain't had that this in here this year, or up until this year. We haven't had it. But that is a buck bed right there. You can see the rub right there. He comes in here, he lays down. I made that so he can escape out of there a little easier. But he's got to go along that wall and then out. If he comes up from the bottom here, you know, if he's spooked out of the bottom here at all, or if we're rattling over in the stand over here, he's got to come along that wall of cover and come out around. And he'll be point blank bow shot and so there's not just this bed here there's a bed here there's a bed on that flat spot right there then i th think that there was another one over here well we've kind of finished up for the day here we've done exactly what we wanted to do creating some walls of cover a little bit of hinge cutting on some maple and a couple oak oak that just weren't going to amount to nothing so I'm not afraid to take an oak once in a while for all of you that blatantly might be crying that I cut some oak there's a time and a place to do it and literally quite frankly some of the oak that I cut is not going to make logs so I'm not worried about it I'm not here to harvest timber anyway if that makes me a bad steward to the land then so be it but anyway, I'll show you what we create some walls to cover. I just let these trees drop. I don't care if they barber chair to off or anything. Obviously, I'm still alive. I don't recommend that you do it the way I cut it. We got our travel corridor here that comes along the inside of the ridge. We got this little trail, buck sneak trail that comes off of his bed off the end of the point here. We've got this wall of cover here now. Now, yes, these birch are gonna settle and rot. What can we do about that? We can get in here 
there's enough mess in here. I can come back in here in the spring. I can, there's plenty of white pine seedlings that I can just pluck out of the ground, bring back up in here and start plugging in these areas. There's plenty of sunlight. Camera doesn't do it justice. There's gonna be enough light to get in here. I know it's cloudy and overcast today, but there's gonna be enough light. We've opened up enough of the canopy to get these, to get light down on the ground and it's gonna help those seedlings. Like I said, I've got white pine seedlings all over this property. I can pluck them out and transplant them or I can dig them out, but you generally in the springtime when the ground is soft, we can pluck them right out of the ground. Um, but anyway, Flip got this wall of cover. It's directing those deer. When that buck is laying down in here, my stand is right there, connects to that trail like I showed you earlier, and right out into the corridor. 10 yard shot. But anyway, just a little tour here. Wall of cover. Now I will say the way this property sets up, and especially this stand here, we have to get into this stand a good two hours before daylight. And our other stand that I showed you earlier in the white oak tree where I shot Captain Hook out of five, six years ago. Um, we have to get in here super early before daylight. And these are all day sits during the pre-rut um, through the rut. I probably will get into these stands here unless I have one on camera that I can get in here early season and kill. When I, like I did with Captain Hook, he was showing up just after daylight, early season, hitting that water hole, going back to bed. I could get in here well before he'd come off the ag field to the south, and it worked out perfectly. Um, haven't done that since. We haven't had the opportunity to since, so there was no point in coming up in here early season to hunt this. But during the rut, say the end of October, October 26th, through well, about the 13th, 14th of November, I can get in here super early in the mornings, get these deer back in here before they would even go back to bed, but if they're cruising, whatever. But if he comes in here into this bed, now I'll come in here later on and I'll rake this out, but he's been in here, obviously, rub there he's probably rubbing when he's right in his bed here he can get in and out of here he can overlook this entire bottom down here we may have a stand in that oak right there i'm not sure yet You're really sticking out like a sore thumb down in that if you do here you get down here at deer level he can't see you, and I probably want, if he come in from the bottom down here, because there is a creek bottom down in here about a quarter mile, if he comes out of there, he even travels that ridge quite a bit over there. And that's, that's a half mile away, that ridge system over there. And that's my cousin's property. We get a lot of the same deer on camera. But if the buck I'm after comes up through here and he sneaks in, lays in this bed, I'll never know that he's here unless I hear him, but we try to get in here on a super, not a super windy day, but, a, you know, a windy day, 10 mile an hour winds. Um, if I don't hear him come in, that's fine. But if I hit the horns or something and entice him out of here, he's never going to see me. He's never going to know I'm here. But now, he, and he's going to go right where I need him to go. But he can get out of here as well. He can escape anywhere down the side of this point and back into the flat if danger should occur. He's got plenty of routes to escape. That's the main thing and that's one of the things and I always will allude to it. When people come in here, do cuttings for bedding, whether it's hinge cutting or dropping trees like we have here today, just dropping the trees, they fail to come back in and open things up and it creates dead ends. Deer don't relate to dead ends very well. They've gotta be able to have escape routes to get out if danger, like a coyote or wolves in this country, bobcat, come in, and they can get out of here. He has multiple ways to escape out of here. You can see behind me going off this point, 
plenty. We can escape out of here. Now I'll come back and I'll clean up these sticks here, get them out of the way because they do travel down into the flat this way out around the point. But there's another bedding, another bed right here by this maple tree. Another bed right in there. But again, can they get out of here? You bet they can. Right through here. You can get out and it connects to that trail that parallels the ridge line down here. Now our main travel corridor is up here. This is our buck sneak travel corridor along this ridge system here, along the north side of the ridge. And it all connects back and leads to our stand there. It leads to our stand and water hole up in here. With southwest winds, any southerly wind, it's blowing our scent out and over. Southwest wind for this stand for sure, because I don't want my wind potentially swirling and going back to him. South, steady southwest wind, he'll never know I'm in here. But you can see this little depression here, that's a bed. Now that's side cover, that's what he's relating to. But he can get out of here. Now I can come back in and clean that up a little bit, but there's no reason a deer can't jump over that, step over it, whatnot. Can get out up through here. But again, here's this buck sneak trail right through here. It actually does go right in between those trees. I don't know how a buck can get through there, but I mean, Got to clean that tree up a little bit. You come right down around here. We're going to end up right back to the sled and the saw. You can see the regen coming already. That big hole in the sky, it's going to allow a lot more light down in here. And we're going to get a lot more of this. These Raspberry briars, there's some regeneration in here, um, barberry. I notice over here by this big oak, we got some uh, elderberry that's really starting to take off. It's gonna give this little guy a chance to get up and get going, but right back out here. Again, there's our stand. We put a mock scrape right here where this main travel corridor goes here. And then out that way, mock scrape here. Be dead meat. This is gonna set up well. This is an ultimate pinch point that we've created. You can create pinch points in the right locations. This is the right location. I've hunted this area since I was 13 years old. The deer love this flat here on top of the ridge. Now we've just made it better. And we've made it predictable of where these deer are gonna be during the certain time of year that we're gonna be up in here hunting. This can be done on your property. If you're confused about what to do, give me a call. I don't recommend that you do any cutting if you're not comfortable. I'm for hire with that as well. And there's other people in the industry that you can reach out to and help you. I absolutely love doing this. Give me a shout. Visit our website. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. It might be under construction yet, which is just fine, but it'll be up soon. Send me an email. I'll leave a link to send me an email as well. Um, but you can find all of our information on our website. Um, again, any of the tools or equipment you've seen me using in this video, you can find links in the description below. And guys, Thanks for joining me. God bless you all and keep living the dream. Thank you.